What a delight uh, all week long to have Jim Canelon as uh, co-host of 100 Huntley Street for years, uh, just uh, part of the family here day after day, ministering to you and caring for you. And uh, I know so many of you are glad to, to see him. Jim, um, let's get updated. First of all, um, since you were regularly hosting, uh, your father went home to be with the Lord. Yes. Uh, my dad yeah, I both, uh, passed away about three months ago. Yeah. Uh, both really, then my dad was 90, your dad was how old? 91. 91. Both preachers. Yeah. We are both preachers' kids. That's right. Pioneers, uh, uh, pioneer sons uh, for, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, my mom also died three, three months before dad died, so. Uh, I went through a bit of a difficult uh, few months there. And, and I can understand that. My yeah. mom, my mom's struggling. Uh, so I just want to bring that out because of, of our friendship. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about what's happening. You're a strategic thinker, wonderful leader, uh, bold in your leadership. Let's talk about what's happening with um, WOW. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, you're, you're real, God has took you 16 years ago, like mm -hmm. never before, into this world of widows and orphans, mm -hmm. the least and lost. Mm -hmm. Talk about that organization that you lead and what's going on. Yeah, yeah I was pastoring Broadway Church in Vancouver, mm -hmm. a terrific church, uh, really a pillar church in the nation. Um, and uh, I was blindsided, actually, by the fact that this very successful, well-established church is located right in the center of the poorest postal code in all of Canada, which is East Vancouver. Mm. Uh, and within blocks of my office and my church were uh, alleyways full of mainly uh, emaciated young native women mainlining uh, and doing drugs and, and having a horrible life. And I began to walk the alleyways there, and I just, it, 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 it got a hold of me. And then I, I started bringing in um, little mission groups that were trying to rescue these women uh, uh, and, and minister to the poor. Uh, and I would say, talk to me, and I'd give them as much lunch as yeah. I could. I said, talk to me, talk to me, but, you know, how can I pray for you? How can I help you? And in the process of that, I, I discovered that East Vancouver has the highest intravenous drug-related HIV rate in the world. Well, I was blown away. Here Your I am. back door. Yeah, Your my back door. door. I see, this is my parish. I, yeah. I'm pastoring <clears throat> this very prosperous, high-profile church, multi-million dollar complex, huge ministry. Yeah. And right in my back door is the is this. Well, I, I couldn't I couldn't take it. Like I, the the juxtaposition was overwhelming for me. And I, as I look back on it now, I, I realize the Lord was working on me. Mm -hmm. he, he was setting me up. Uh, he really was, you know, and it's, it's really true, John, you know this, whatever God's doing in your life now is preparation for what he'll, he will be doing. Yes, that's right. That's just the way it works. And over a period, he's prepared your whole life for what you're doing. Absolutely, right absolutely. So anyway, uh, uh, Kath and I uh, decided we're going to embrace the issue of HIV and AIDS. And the, the number one issue, as I saw it and understood it at that time, was what HIV and AIDS was producing in the world. And that was the greatest number of orphans and widows that world history has ever known. And you go to the scripture, and what do you discover? A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. Yeah. His number one heavenly priority begins with the weakest link, the orphan and the widow. So no-brainer. I didn't know what in the world I was doing. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll never forget, Kath and I, you know, we resigned Broadway. Uh, we, we incorporated Vision Led, as we called it at that time. We, we, we came across Canada in a 10-year-old Audi that someone had given us. We lived out of suitcases for eight months. I had no income, no, no fixed address. No, I had a staff of over 30 now. I had no staff. Uh, all I had was this vision. And frankly, I felt more than dislocated mm -hmm. at times, mm -hmm. especially when I run into friends of mine from the ministry who were established in their churches. And, but anyway, yeah. the upshot of it is that we started working in, in uh, Southern Africa. Uh, I started going from church to church, mostly country churches, little churches. And I was like a prophet in a strange land. Uh, African pastors did not want to hear about this. I'm challenging them to righteousness and justice, love for God and love for neighbor, the care of the orphan and the widow, weakest link. I, I would say to African churches, you know, there's something wrong with this picture. You're having this great bless me time. And within a five kilometer radius of this church, there's 3,000 people dying of HIV and AIDS and you don't care. Mm. Well, you know, that's not a very popular message. No. The upshot of it is that over time, you know, it's incremental. It's kind of like uh, Chinese water torture, I suppose. I just kept at it. And uh, I, I ended up on, I, I'm still on this, the back of a bucking bronco. Um, I'm dealing now with thousands of churches. When I have a pastor's conference to cast vision for orphans and widows, I'll have anywhere from four to 7,000 attending for three days. Um, we, we now are, and the way, the way we work 
So I, I learned this when I worked with Youth for Christ years ago. If you want to impact the high school, go to the principal. So I go to the head men mm -hmm. of, the, of the community, yeah. the ones in charge, the chief, yeah. the, yeah. The, the, leaders. All, the leaders, the gatekeepers, yeah. I call them. Yeah. I bring them together with all the pastors of all the churches. If all the churches don't engage, I don't work in a community. But it trickles down to the grassroots. Now, and it's all Africans. I'm the only white guy in the mix. Right? <laughs> uh, and it's all sustainable. Mm -hmm. So it, it, uh, the word the Lord gave me when we started Vision Led Wow was catalyst. Today, fast forward, 250,000 orphans and widows we are involved in the care of now. Wow. Uh, and, and it's very compre it's very comprehensive. Quarter of a million. Yeah, community centers, schools, uh, medical programs, feeding programs, uh, well drilling, uh, latrines, uh, education right up through high school, the training of, uh, of pastors. Uh, we, we, I'm going to a conference in a few weeks. I've got uh, uh, 3,000 young people in Malawi uh, that they come every year to meet with me. We're, we, we put them through a year-long Bible training course. They've got to care for the orphan and the widow while they study the Bible. They're all breaking the cycle of poverty. It's one of the most exciting stories out there. Uh, we have a, just a moment left. How can people find out more about what we knew as Vision Led, but now is yeah, uh, wow. branded WOW? Wow. Uh, wow uh, WOWmission.com. We'll have it on the screen. Yeah, just WOWmission.com. Uh, and uh, you can log on to it and get a copy of uh, the book I wrote to describe the evo evolution of the ministry called When God Stood Up. And uh, I'm happy to respond to anybody who wants to know more about it. Well, we're grateful you're here. Thanks for your years. As we're approaching our 10,000th episode, you had a few thousand to, to, <laughs> to few contribute. Thousand, yeah. And I love you so much. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your friendship to me over the years. You too, John. And it's just great to work with hey, you again. Hey, pleasure, always. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Thank you. 